Well, this is certainly one of my favorite passages of Scripture as we're going backwards from Revelation to Genesis. It's found in 1 Corinthians. If you remember, 1 Corinthians is all about Paul getting word that there's problems in Corinth. Uh, there's problems of immorality. There's problems of pride. There's problems of division. Uh, and uh, Paul has to try to deal with these problems by letter. He makes it very clear to them that he's received uh, information about the quarrels among them and he's calling them for there to be no division and for there to be unity. Uh, you find that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 10 and 11. Uh, and he finds that some of these problems are caused by pride. Some saying that they were baptized by Paul, some saying they were baptized by Apollos, some by Cephas, and some by Christ, and uh, all taking pride in the fact that whoever they were baptized was superior to somebody else's baptism. But Paul sets them straight right off the bat, and he says, uh, Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you agree that there is no division among you, but that you made but that you may be made complete in the, the same mind and in the same judgment for I have informed, been informed of your quarrels. Then he says, uh, I came to you, uh, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom or proclaiming to you the testimony of God, for I determined to know nothing among you except Christ Jesus and him crucified, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and the power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on power of God. Paul sets it straight right off from the beginning. He says, uh, you shouldn't be bragging about who baptized you. Uh, the one who died for you, who was crucified for you, was Christ Jesus. And uh, you should have been baptized into, into faith and grace uh, because of Christ Jesus. Now, there were three types of people, and this is why this is one of my favorite sections of Scripture, because uh, any time I speak in anybody's church, there are always going to be three types of people present. Uh, and very clearly there will be some of every one of these types in almost any church that you speak in. The first one is the natural man. And the natural man is found in 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved it is the power of God. Now, there's almost always somebody that went to a service because somebody else kind of pressured them into doing it. Uh, or because it's the right thing to do socially or whatever. Uh, and for those people, uh, the word of the cross is foolishness. Uh, they don't believe it. They're there for the wrong reasons. And so we have the natural man. And then there's, in 1 Corinthians 2, 15 and 16, there's the spiritual man. Listen to how Paul describes the spiritual man. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So there's the spiritual man. He is spiritually in tune. And he is not going to be judged by any man. Uh, he is going to be able to appraise things spiritually. But my guess is that Paul was addressing most of his comments uh, in chapter 1. Uh, as he deals with his concern uh, and probably in the second section of 1 Corinthians his condemnation uh, both his concern and his condemnation come to another group not the natural man and not the spiritual man but the carnal man and we find the carnal man in 1 Corinthians 2 verses 1 through 5 and when I came to you, brethren, I did not come to you with superiority of speech. Uh, excuse me, let me go back. The carnal man is found in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual men, but as men of the flesh, as to infants in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, for you are not yet able to receive it. Indeed, even now you're not able. 
for you are still fleshly. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not fleshly, and are you not walking like mere men? For when, you're, when one says, I am of Paul, and another says, I am of Apollos, you are not, are you not mere men? So Paul deals directly with this division, and he says, I'm dealing with you as carnal men. Now, how many of them may have gone back to uh, having some feelings for Aphrodite and, and uh, the pagan society around them? How many of them uh, might have been fighting because of pride and ego about who baptized them? Uh, their quarrels and their divisions were clearly showing that they were not spiritual. They probably weren't natural men, uh, but they were carnal men. And so he tries to set them straight and get unity going again. And it's going to be a joy to take a look at not only his concern, but also to look at his condemnation of wrong behavior. Uh, so uh, I hope that you'll take a look at this section of scripture that uh, you can see these three type of people. Let me give you them again, but since I stumble around there a little bit, the natural man is found in 1 Corinthians 1.18. The spiritual man is found in 1 Corinthians 2.15 and 16. And the carnal man is found in 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 4. Paul addresses the fact that they shouldn't be proud about who baptized them uh, very clearly in chapter 3, verse 4, and also in 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. And uh, I hope that uh, you'll take a look at this passage of Scripture because this is kind of the foundation of the three types of people we find in the world and in the church uh, and everywhere that we preach. My thought for the day, God bless you and have a great day.